So, once you uh, go through once uh, conducting a cultural competence quiz, you will get to know the overall awareness of people's their understanding about a given culture. Uh, as we all know that you know cross cultural uh, uh, competencies are multifold. This is one of the article that was published in you know International Journal of Cross Cultural Management in 2015. Here these authors have developed a tool for cultural question assessment, where they tried to uh, measure metacognitive question, cognitive question, motivational question and behavioral questions. So, let us have a look at it. So, this is the article that was published in you know cross cultural management measuring cultural intelligence. I will just uh, uh, show you some of the items. Yes. So, these are some of the items say for examples like metacognitive you know metacognitive is nothing. So, th these measures what we call the cultural question intelligence inventory you know <coughs> cultural intelligence. So, it measures four aspects one is called metacognitive question this is nothing, but a person's cultural consciousness and awareness of cultural cues during interaction with people from other cultural backgrounds. You know a group of authors like Ang and his colleagues 2006 described that it as a processes people use to acquire and understand cultural knowledge. For example, people with metacognitive CQ or cultural intelligence consciously question their own cultural assumptions, reflects on these assumptions, develop cultural knowledge and understanding during interactions with people from other countries. So, when they find is there any discrepancies, is there any similarities, is there any you know shortfall in their cultures, the questions why this, is it ok for my survival, is it good for my societies, it is good for my, is it good for my organizations. So, these are some of the questions uh, that acts as an inner dialogue within yourself when you try to develop this kind of understanding, cultural understanding at your conscious levels. The second is called cognitive CQ. This is a competence based on knowledge of norms, practices and conventions that how good are you in practicing your cultural norms, rules, regulation and convention. I have seen uh, you know there are many psychology professors when they travel abroad, I have seen uh, they, they are practicing so many orthodox rituals in pertaining to their uh, you know lifestyles, food habits, dress patterns etcetera, etcetera. A person who travels to a you know country where non-vegetarian is prominently you know predominantly taken by people, but I have seen people taking fruits only and alive for weeks without any dishes because everything is non-veg in that country. So, this kind of cognitive CQ that you know this kind of understanding gives them a you know uh, sacred feelings. So, that is why they try to practice this kind of rituals, but uh, it, it, it one way although it is good for their survival the other way it restricts them, because we often believe that when you are in Rome behave like a Roman. However, there are two other question what you call cultural question related to motivational domain and behavioral domain. The motivational domain represents uh, one's capability to direct attention and energy towards learning about and functioning in a situation called characterized by a cultural differences. People with a high motivational cultural questions have an interesting interest in cross cultural situations and are confident of their personal cross cultural effectiveness. So, therefore, people those who are high in their motivational cultural questions are likely to adapt to other cultures very fast, they will be more effective in other cultures, they will be easily learning the other cultural patterns of behavior in a other country or different country. So, this will facilitate their cross cultural effectiveness. 
and the fourth one is what we call the behavioral cultural intelligence or cultural question with that refers to the capability to exhibit appropriate verbal and nonverbal behavior when interacting with people from different cultures. This is exactly I was hi highlighting that this is very much important. You must know how to express your emotions, how to express uh, your nonverbal languages in other culture, whether it is appreciated in that culture or it is encouraged in that culture. One need to have this kind of awareness and knowledge. Otherwise, a person will be misunderstood, misinterpreted. So, that will create a great deal of conflict. So, let us check out wh what the scale measures. I am conscious of cultural knowledge I use when interacting with people with different cultural backgrounds. So, I, so if you are scoring it high, then you, you are you are measuring that you are high on your metacognitive intelligence. I adjust my cultural knowledge as I interact with people from a culture that is unfair to me. I am conscious of cultural knowledge I apply to cross cultural interactions. I check the accuracy of my cultural knowledge as I interact with people from different countries. So, so a high score on these four items indicates you are high on your metacognitive you know cultural question, but when you go down and see I know the legal and economic systems of other countries. This is pertaining to your knowledge, skills, competencies about other countries. I know the rules, the vocabulary, the grammar of the language that is being used here. I know the cultural values and the religious beliefs of other cultures. I know the marriage systems of other cultures. I know the arts and the craft of other cultures. I know the rules of expressing nonverbal behaviors in other cultures and also I know the rules and regulation working on the street because a person moving from Asian countries to western countries will find a great deal of difficulty in terms of traffic rules and regulations. So, these are certain you know cognitive related abilities that facilitate cross cultural competencies. The, th the th third category is called the motivational CQ a motivational cultural context. What do you call I enjoy interacting with people from different cultures. When you go to United States you know every weekend people celebrates people dance with drinks, but a Indian who is typical Indian from deep down village you know he is very hesitant he is happy with a cup of tea he has he hates drinking how he will you know. Uh, interact with these people. So, he after some time he will be odd man out, he has to leave the organization, but a clever fellow who is culturally or cross cultural competent will easily accommodate, he should think that I am a man now in the United States not in India. So, I should adjust to this condition as per the requirements, that is the ideal ability required for cross cultural competencies. I am sure I can deal with the stresses of adjusting to a culture that is new to me. So, this kind of feelings that often comes you know in individualistic culture where people often uh, try to maintain their own privacy, but a person from collective society is always uh, you know like to live in the gang of others or in the group of friends or uh, you know own family peoples, where you know collective society people are likely to suffer when they migrate from you know collective uh, collectivistic uh, cultural country to individualistic culture country, but when you look into the behavioral uh, cultural quotient I change my verbal behavior when a cross cultural interaction require. So, as per the demand of the situation if you rephrase your words if you if you bring change in your uh, behavior or in your actions uh, and you communicate the way it is appreciated in other culture probably that will enhance your cross cultural effectiveness. Say for examples like I use pause silence differently to use different cross cultural situations you know it has been seen you know in TOEFL examination when uh, uh, 
and there is another examination called ELT or something like you know, International English Language Test. It has been observed very frequently in India that Indians speak very fast. They, they are very aggressive in their spoke, spoken English. They, they speak very fast. So, uh, that is why it, it is always recognized that you know you should take a pause. Allow others to get to know what you are actually trying to convey. So, it's your communication style should be such that it will be neither too fast nor too slow. Too slow you will be also an indication of your very poor state of your intelligence. So, that is why you know keeping all these things in mind one should express himself in while interacting with a person from other cultures. I change my nonverbal behavior when a cultural interaction requires you know too much of body moments in front of others also creates very bad impressions. So, one should make use of body language minimum as minimum possible. So, that will you know reflects a better um, uh, side of your behavior. I alter my facial expressions you know when a cross cultural interaction required it. So, this is how you know a high score on these four dimensions reflects a better side of one's cross cultural questions. So, it has been seen that a person having you know cultural intelligence high level of cultural intelligence is likely to be competent cultural uh, across cultures. So, cultural competence is nothing but a process of learning that leads to an ability to effectively respond to the challenges and opportunities proposed by the presence of cultural diversity in a defined social systems. So, these are some of the elements of you know cultural competence, awareness of one's own culture, how much you know about uh, a culture uh, Japanese culture, Chinese culture as an Indian, how much you know about American culture, how, how much you know about uh, uh, South American culture or Latin American cultures, uh, understanding the dynamics of difference, what is causing difference or creating difference between you and the person from other cultures you need to understand. Uh, cross cultural competence also helps a person to develop awareness and acceptance of differences. Can you interact with a person who, who is a non vegetarian, you being a vegetarian person or do you have some heart rate within yourself? I have seen people cannot take their food in front of non vegetarians. So, they are so much rigid about their practices and lifestyles. Number four, development and applications of cultural knowledge. This is also another competency of cross cultural knowledge and skills. Celebration of diversity. Are you ready to celebrate other cultures in terms of rituals, social customs, marriage systems, religions? You are a Hindu. Can you go to a mosque and pray God? You are a you are a Muslim. Can you go to Christian? Can you go to church? Uh, to embrace Christianity. So, this kind of you know flexibility always brings in change and develop cross cultural adaptability. Cross cultural competence also uh, you know has been described as to be culturally competent does not mean you are an authority in the values and beliefs of every culture. What it means is that you hold a deep respect for other cultures and you, you have a good understanding of the similarity and the differences in others and you are eager to learn, you are eager to bring change in yourself. So, that is the most important competency in the framework of cross cultural competence and how much you are willing to accept and that are many ways in viewing the world that is very important. So, these are some of the you know quick tips uh, for checking your cross cultural continuum. Suppose, you are a beginner, you are at the red light area what you call red, this, this is your attitude, your behavior, values and practices, they are completely at a freeze stage you can say and uh, you know then where you are feeling threatened by other cultures, you are destructive like you know Hindu Muslim fight, intergroup fight between Hindu Muslim. So, that means, you are at the red light area now. Now, with the education and the training you realize orange is you know lack of you, you are open to experience, but you do not have the required skills and knowledge. So, therefore, 
you are lack of skills and knowledge to respond effectively to the needs interest and preferences of culturally and linguistically diverse groups the, then when you move on and educate yourself you will reach at the stage what is that is called elo so this is a stage where you develop you change your beliefs and practices and that support viewing and treat all people the same then thereafter you start telling others all human beings are equal there is only one religion that is humanity there is only one race that is humanity there is only one ethnicity that is humanity so then you reach out a label that is called green this is a label that embraces other you have a full awareness about other strength and areas for growth to respond effectively to culturally and linguistically diverse population so now you are ready to respond to the global diversity so therefore you you can accept the differences that is you, you observing in other cultures and you can respect them and the purpose is that now you are ready to embrace the whole world that is called you holds a culture in high esteem every culture is good you know it is the way you look at that is very important that is the you know true um, competency in terms of cross cultural framework this is how a person move from growing himself initially you are very rigid and you do not accept other culture you are very destructive then there are you know uh, your cultural capability is very less you are too much ignore about other culture and then you start learning about it you reach at the cultural pre competence stage then after developing awareness you you are now ready to embrace others that is called the cultural competence and this is a cultural proficiency you are practicing you know you, you are accommodating other cultures this is how the framework you know cultural competence continuum goes on so this is how when you grow up and develop your awareness uh, about other religions other cultures and um, other races then you develop your cultural competency framework the cultural dest dest destructiveness are these are you know actively participate in purposeful act attacks on other cultures like like you know bajrangi dal they go and attack mcdonalds during you know uh, the celebration of lovers day or uh, fathers day or mothers day so people the custodian of indian culture they feel threatened this is a cultural pollution to india that's why they think like this but there is nothing like this the moment you feel that that is also a kind of rituals in other cultures and that brings closer people then your attitude will be changed then cultural incapacity lacking the capacity to help individuals to form other cultures you are unable to create a place for other culture then cultural ignorance the prospective that color or culture makes no difference whatsoever you may be black i may be white you may be hindu i may be muslim it hardly matters for creating a society cultural pre competence means awareness of one's limitations in serving persons of diversity so you need that nobody is perfect in this world no society is bad in this world so we should embrace each other's limitations and strength and weaknesses cultural competence is accepting and respecting differences among and within different cultures even in india india being one of the most multicultural country there are different society exist within it and there are variations but we embrace each other the moment we accept each others we call that there is unity in diversity so that's why india is known for its uh, uh, diversity even if we are diverse in our culture we live as one indian in terms of our unity so that is where you display a cultural proficiency taking a proactive approach towards cross cultural competency this is a process of gaining cross cultural competency from lack of cultural awareness to actively seeking knowledge about other cultures educate others about cultural differences so when you educate others about cultural differences you accept appreciates and accommodates other cultural differences 
and that is where you you can merge one culture with other culture so the reflection is here that now think about where you fall on this continuum what is one thing you can do more about or more along the continuum towards cultural proficiency once you go back and check it this framework where do you stand exactly and what needs to be done are you at the destructive state incapacity state blind state competent state accordingly you can embrace others so reflection should also in where where does the agency fall on this continuum how much or how can everyone work together to move the agency along the continuum towards cultural proficiency we all need cultural competence being from different culture bring from unknown cultures so everyone will work with people outside their own cultural group so they must be able to learn about relate to communicate with people who are different from themselves so that's why there should be in you will find in all mnc's in all multinational companies there is one canteen uh, one common room because people can meet each other people can interact with each other and they can share with each others so all the foods are varieties but place is same and this common place that brings them closer to know about each others and that builds trust and rapport with each other that enables them to work together effectively so that is the perspective of cross cultural competence so the key elements uh, of cross cultural competent organizations and their staff are they value diversity assess themselves manage the dynamics of difference acquire and institutionalize cultural knowledge adapt to diversity and the cultural context of individuals and communities serve so say for examples i am a indian but if i think that if i learn japanese that will be an added advantage to me i should embrace it i should learn it but if i full stop put a full stop no it is not going to help me anyway i'll be in trouble when i travel to japan so that is how one should embrace other cultures this is a popular phrase how one can explore strategies to enhance cross cultural competence so this is a popular slogan during the us uh, presidential campaign speech by you know hillary clinton together we can make america better safer and greater so together what do you mean by together that summarizes everything let's come and embrace each others so that was just countering the speech of donald trump even if she was defeated but that created a lot of appreciation appreciation all across the all over the globe so now the question is enhancing cross cultural competency so this is a you know uh, uh, this is a side you can uh, get the slice of the cross cultural competency framework uh, through this video so one can enhance uh, cross cultural uh, competencies of its organization by nurturing you know cross cultural values uh, uh, governance it it can be nurtured through good governance by goal setting policy making your rules and regulations should be such that accommodates people from across cultures it should be a place for diverse cultural backgrounds there should not be any issue of you know um, uh, conflict related to ethnicity race religion language etc etc planning and monitoring evaluation mechanisms and process used to guide cultural competence planning system activities in place and track the changes that is happening and it are at a different level of cultural competence communication the exchange of information between organizations should be clearly communicated and internally among the staff in ways to promote cultural competence so whether it is a, a, a health organization manufacturing organization or or a telecom organizations so so the Devel development plan should start with uh, from the bottom line staff development program then creating organizational infrastructures and services or interventions the degree to which organization delivers services in culturally competent manners so these are some of the tips leading with cultural intelligence if you read local newspaper then you will get to know what is happening nearby so that is uh, very much important go to the movies and museum know about the cultural patterns of those country you eat out 
eat out in McDonald's, KFC, you will get to know what is happening to India. Or you go to China, um, you know, Chinatown, you will get Chinese foods, Chinese uh, other items. So, that is how we enhance our capacity and awareness about other cultures, learn a new language, attend cultural celebrations, find a cultural coach. This is the most better way who can guide you. Who visit a temple, mosque and a church, you will get to know more about what is happening in that culture. Consume a variety of new sources, new dress, new foods, new other items, etcetera, etcetera. Join a multicultural group. This is, you know, the, you know nowadays, you know, uh, in, uh, in different countries, there are clubs, they accommodate people from different cultures. Be a member of that, get to know about people. Take a class in other culture, you will interact with students, you will get to know more about them. Create a faith in club, then you can enhance your level of trust. So, these are some of the you know uh, points that one must look into for enhancing cultural intelligence. The lessons learned is that cultural competence can build relationship building. So, therefore, there is a need for cross cultural education. So, the cross cultural um, competency can be can be developed through our education or academic interactions. Cross cultural education is a key intervention strategy in reducing conflicts and disparity. Once you address the issue of attitudes, you know cultural sensitivity and awareness approach and once you increase the knowledge of multiculturalism and categorical approach. The, this categorical approach actually gives rise to class and uh, caste conflicts. So, once you remove that barrier, probably that will create a common platform for cross cultural interactions. Then develop skills through cross cultural approach, you know, like developing you know uh, knowing about other language, religion, ethnicity, learning other languages. So, this is how um, knowing about you know the, the rules, regulations, governance of other countries, you develop you know your cross cultural intelligence. So, this is how gradually you build up your skills to enhance cross cultural competency. So, cultural intelligence is dependent on more mainly three aspects, cultural competence, cross cultural efficacy and cultural humility. Cultural competence is your knowledge, attitude and skills about other cultures. Uh, in related to health related beliefs, administration, governance, treatments and other cultures. Cross cultural efficacy means providers or uh, administrators uh, learns uh, how their own culture uh, understands uh, new patients or in, in case of health related organizations, culturally based behaviors are important and humility, you know deliver service with empathy that is what we call it humility. So, humility is the best quality that can enhance one's cross cultural effectiveness across culture. But the in addition to that, these are some of the uh, tips that has been uh, noted here that you, are, you, you need to develop cultural beliefs, uh, behavior and common practices, attitude towards other systems uh, and specifically in terms of inquiring, learning specific preferences of individuals, what works better for people in other cultures, understand that cultures are diverse within themselves and most important is self reflections. Enhance your self awareness of your own attitudes, beliefs in order to minimize the influence of stereotypes on your practices. Skills you learn, ask appropriate questions about race, ethnicity, family, religion, so that you will get to know more about others. So, extend your cultural competence to your work as a member of the organizations, religious, racial and ethnicity diversity, diversity in terms of age, gender, sexual orientation, disability, socioeconomic status, etcetera, etcetera. This will enrich one's knowledge and skills to facilitate one's cross cultural competencies. If you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you very much. Uh, these are some of the assignments. Uh, one can do. What do you know about your cultural background? Identify the cultural issues that influence feeling, thinking and actions. How can you develop cross cultural competence? What is the need of cross cultural competence in today's world? Where do you place emotional intelligence in the framework of cross cultural adaptability? That is all I am.
Thank you very much.